Yep, it's another artist attempting the teeny weeny challenge. What can I say? It's a lot of fun, and Casey Golden... It was Casey, right? Not Rin? She stumbled onto a great thing when she made this a trend in the YouTube art world. Hello, and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. Today's video is actually a collab. Who would have guessed? I do so few of them, I know. <laughs> Kidding, of course. It feels like I've done more collaborations than solo videos so far this year, and that's certainly not a bad thing. Today I'm collaborating with Weblight Dreams, Aurora's Art World, and The Lori Files. In other words, the usual suspects, the half of the Art Addicts Alliance who seem to be up for extra punishment at all times. Everybody's links will be in the description box down below and in the pinned comment. Go check them out after this video if you haven't seen their videos yet, and let them know I sent you. If you're coming here for the first time from one of their channels, hello! Not sure how this is the first collab with any of them you're seeing a link to me, but it's nice to have you here anyway. I hope you'll like what you see. I'm using gouache on a 3x3 inch canvas and I'm going to attempt a beautiful flowy betta fish illustration with a limited color palette. I'm using Dale Rani brand gouache for anyone who's curious, a mix of Simply and Aquafine tubes. Aquafine where I had the colors I needed and uh, Simply where I didn't. I will say I absolutely love how this turned out and I'm proud of it. This is only my second time using gouache on canvas after all, I've never done a beta fish before. And the only other productive thing I've done with these tiny canvases since I bought them two years ago was the makeup art challenge I did with Colornix a couple months ago. All of that said, there is one big thing I would change about this piece if I were to do it again. I'll reveal what that is a little further along so you have a chance to spot it. Let me know if you figured it out before I revealed it when I get there and whether or not you agree. Hint, it has nothing to do with how realistic the fish does or doesn't come out. I'm going for a whimsical look, so if fins end up being the wrong size or shape, no big deal. This canvas was supposedly already primed, but it's a cheap canvas and I'm not working in oil or acrylic like it was probably intended for, so I chose not to trust that. I used some basic white gesso and applied two light coats to make sure I had an even surface to work on. Since gouache is more opaque and just generally has more body to it than traditional watercolors, basic gesso works just fine to prime the canvas. If I were to do this with watercolors, I would want to have watercolor grounds for the final layer of priming at the very least. Of course, traditional watercolors wouldn't turn out the same. I'm absolutely using this gouache more like acrylic than watercolor. By that, I mean I'm not diluting it into thin washes, I'm not trying to preserve the white of my substrate, and I'm doing a lot of wet on wet blending and fully expecting the colors to stay exactly where I put them and not bleed into one another. The nice thing about gouache is that you have that option, but if you want a more of a watercolor look, it is still a watercolor type paint. You absolutely can make a wash and treat it like watercolor. I very much appreciate that gouache is such a familiar medium to me as someone who likes watercolor, but it lets me pretend that it's acrylic when I want to do things like this. It's so versatile. If you've worked with both regular gouaches like this and also acrylic gouache, let me know what you think of the two and which one you like best. What I'm curious to know is, does acrylic gouache still behave like watercolor if you want it to, or is it basically just a very water-soluble acrylic paint? Also, does it dry more or less matte than regular gouache does? Because regular gouache like this dries pretty matte. You won't see me sealing this on camera because I'm not set up to do that, but I did seal it. I used a couple coats of a UV filtering spray first, since the Simply colors I used aren't as light fast as the Aquafine, but when that was dry, I also put on a layer of Kmart varnish to make it glossy again. By the way, if you're one of the 80-ish percent of my viewers who aren't subscribed, and you plan to come back, I would encourage you to subscribe and join the club now. I'm going to be hosting an international giveaway contest once I'm able to apply for the YouTube Partner Program, which I should manage to do by summer. And in order to be eligible, you've got to subscribe. I'll be giving away a bundle of art supplies and a small original artwork to one of my subscribers 
anywhere in the world, as long as you're at least 14 years old and live in a country that can accept a package from Canada. Hopefully by the time we're doing this, current events will be more under control, but any temporary changes to shipping options aren't going to make you ineligible, it'll just mean that we'll have to wait for a good time to ship. Back to the artwork. Have you figured out yet what it is I would change about this piece? The answer is, in a word, composition. I went so big with the fish's tail that so much of it touches the border of the canvas and goes off the edge. Yet there's a significant gap between the fish and the edge to the left and underneath him. It's absolutely okay to go off the edge, but this just doesn't feel balanced to me. I would either position him better so that he's closer to the bottom left and perhaps then doesn't go off the edge at all, or I'd have made him bigger so that he goes off the edges on the other sides as well. What do you think? Be sure to check out Weblight Dreams, Aurora's Art World, and The Lori Files if you haven't already. And if you have, here are some other video suggestions for you to go check out now. I upload art every Tuesday and Thursday at minimum, so if you're into living life creatively, whatever that means for you, I'd love to have you come back next week. Bye guys!